there is a new Republican congressman on Capitol Hill. New Jersey's Jeff Van Drew officially saying goodbye to the Democrats amid disagreements over impeachment policy and the direction of the party. Congressman Jeff Van Drew joins me right now in an exclusive interview. Congressman, it is a pleasure to see you. Thanks very much for joining me this morning. It is a pleasure to be with you, and as I was saying before, uh, I am so proud to be associated with you. You truly represent what news media should be about and just how to conduct a show like this. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very proud of you and the work that you do and uh, the objectivity that you have. So I thank really you. And you that. were the first one to give me a shot, too. Congressman, that means the world to me in, in, this, uh, in this environment of media today. I so, I'm grateful, and I so appreciate your comments. Let me ask you, we, we spoke on the phone the other day, and, and you said, you know, Marie, I always look for signs. There was a sign, something in you that said, I'm not comfortable here. Tell me how you came to this decision to leave the majority, the Democrats, and become a Republican congressman. Well, the final point and the final sign, so there has been all along, you know, where the party is moving further and further to the left, where there's discussions of it being a socialist party, and I am a proud capitalist. I believe in hard work. I believe that we can give people opportunity, uh, but that they also, when they get that opportunity, have to work hard to achieve success. You can't give them success. And many other things that I'm sure we'll talk as we go along here. But the final sign for me <clears throat> was, oddly enough, um, actually in my home county when one of the county chairmen, and I have eight counties, one of the county chairmen came to me and said, I have to speak with you. And I said, sure, and sat down. And he said, I just want to let you know that you have to vote for impeachment. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, you've got to vote for impeachment. If you don't, you're not going to be able to run in my county. Well, first of all, it's not his county, it's our county. And you're not going to be able to move forward. You're not going to get the line, which is a big deal in New Jersey. And, and you're not going to be successful. And I, first of all, I still could have run and I could, still could have gotten the line and I could have fought it out. I fought a lot of things in my life and I fought hard to be where I am. But it made me think for all the years that I've worked so hard and tried to give so much, uh, not only to the party, but to everybody, um, the things that we've done, and I won't go into them, but many, many infrastructure projects and helping people and all the services that we try to give people in our offices, and it all boils down to one vote that I may have my own individual opinion on one vote, and that's not going to be allowed. I'm going to be punished for that, and that's when I knew. I had been thinking about it for a while, and I said, and you know, I was speaking to my chief of staff about this, and, and I said to her, I said, you know, there's always been in my career and over time something that happens that lets you know that it is time to make a change. And this was it. You know, that's it really told interesting. Me it was time to make a change. So you were uncomfortable with the shaming and, you know, the, the pushback that you couldn't do what you, you thought was right, that you had to go along with the herd. Look, we talked about this before that, you know, Congress is going to have to go back to its district. And we've got a map here of the 31 districts of what the districts that President Trump won, but these people will have to get reelected. Mm -hmm. And they also have to follow their conscience. And yet, this impeachment vote last week, you were among the few. You and Colin Peterson, Peterson uh, were the only two that voted no on both articles, and then one other voted no on just one article. So post-impeachment vote, what are you feeling today? What struck you about the impeachment? You were a no going into it. You told us that a month ago. Exactly. And uh, how I feel today is I feel good. I feel that I did the honorable thing. I feel that I did what was right for me and right for the country. And I heard Lindsay a little while before, this impeachment is a weak, thin impeachment that just doesn't really mean anything much to most of the Amer American people. And it has been a long, dark shadow on our country. And folks are tired. I really believe folks are tired of it. They're tired of the hours and hours and hours of time that has been spent on it. They're tired of the millions of dollars that have been spent on it, and they want to move forward. Maria, we have so many important issues, and yes, we've done a few. 
no doubt. We're doing a few. But there are so many more, whether it's election security, whether it's better care for our veterans, uh, whether it's a host of other issues, and I could go through one after another, Medicare, Medicaid, we can talk about all of them that we should be concentrating 100 percent of our time on. We are there to work for the American people and not to have constant political bickering yeah. and to come up with a weak impeachment. And, you know, most importantly, we must understand what impeachment is. It almost never happens for a reason. Other than declaring war, it is the most serious issue that America and action that America could ever, ever take. And it harms our country. It fractions us apart. It makes us more, literally, creates more civil unrest. It creates more yeah. unhurt. I want to bring people together. Let's bring Americans together. Congressman, I, you know, uh, throughout this week, after you made the switch, a lot of people were saying, well, look, he left the Democrats. Now he's a Republican. How can we trust him as a Republican? So we have your voting record here, and you, you have followed your principles in your voting record. I mean, we've got that you voted to override President Trump's veto of a bill that overturned his emergency declaration for border wall funding. You voted to block President Trump from withdrawing from the Paris Climate Change Accord. When you look at your voting record and you hear some of the skeptics who say, look, Jeff Van Drew just left his own party. Now he's with us. We don't know if we can trust him. What do you want to say about that in terms of how you are going to push for the Republican Party now? I'm going to, I always pushed for what I believed was right and what I believed was best. And so, for example, we talked about the environment a little bit. I believe that um, we can have a good environment and that we can do what's right for the environment at the, at the same time, not hurt our business atmosphere in the state and in the country. And I think that's very, very important. And I think the biggest reason I can say that people know that, I've had many, many Republicans vote for me for years and many Democrats. I try to do, again, what is the best. So um, I've won in areas, and as we've talked about before, where I was, you know, um, one of the, literally, I think only the first or the second state senator in history to ever win in my state, in my district. Um, I was only one of a handful of freeholders that ever won since the Civil War, which are county commissioners. Make a long story short, people voted me not only because of my political party, right. but most importantly because they knew my word was my bond. They knew that I love this country more well, than anything well, in the, the other world thing is, I heard and that you, we can I, do better. I heard you quote Reagan the other day, and you said, look, I didn't leave, it, it, he said, I didn't leave the Dem Party, the Democratic Party left me. And I love what you said the other day when I spoke with you. You said, look, I want America to know that we're exceptional. I believe in America exceptionalism. So, and you're a capitalist. Tell me what went wrong in terms of the Democratic Party that it doesn't see, it feel like they see it the way you do. Real quick, sir. Well, and and that's where you hit it on the head. So, you know, I speak about American exceptionalism a lot. For those that are not real familiar with it, it means that America is a truly unique nation. That it is the greatest nation in the world. That we have so much potential, and we are the leaders of the free world. Right. And that that we are leaders in general. And I had Democrats come to me and say, that's wrong. We're the same as any other country in the world. Congressman, thank They're you. They're wrong. That's I, not I'm true. I'm so proud to have you this morning, sir. Thank you. Congratulations to you. Thank you.